Hi everyone, it's Kevin of Bear Creek, honey. Uh, first weeks in the books for being a uh, commercial beekeeper or working for a commercial beekeeping company, I guess I should say. Um, right now, all I'm doing is pretty much getting eased into things uh, and watching and learning how the operation essentially operates. Uh, they're bringing me along slowly. Um, as far as the beekeeping part of it, um, haven't done really a whole lot of it. I am getting a taste of what commercial beekeeping uh, is all about. Uh, a lot of it really does not have a lot to do with the bees themselves. It's organizing and getting boxes ready and getting the yards ready and and unloading boxes that come from uh florida uh, and then transferring them from uh you know the unloading yards where they come in 600 hives per truckload and then hauling them out you know 200 hives at a time out to you know individual yards you know 15, 12 15 miles apart uh, which takes a long time to, um, you know, get out to those yards and, you know, take off the the, uh, the skitter with the forklifts and um, and unload all the bees. And pretty much I am just relegated to being more of a laborer and a smoker guy and just watching and learning and seeing how things done. Everything from strapping down loads. I mean, everything is a learning experience for me. This is all new. You know, nothing is uh, is a given here. It's not like they're just going to hand me the keys and say go. Uh, kind of got to work your way into things. Um, the kid that uh, I actually work for, he's only 28, but you can tell pretty well uh, he is a uh, an extremely hard worker. Uh, Time means very little to him. I mean, you know, he's there from dawn till dark. And, he, and there's just no complaints. He just, it just is what it is. It's his, you know, it's his father's operation. And, and you know, pretty soon he is, I'm going to guess, where he's got a part ownership. And um, that's what you do. It's not any different than really being a farmer. Uh, farming is a way of life. And you just have to know that going in. Um you make hay when the sun shines. You know, I, I started work on Saturday. I was off Sunday. And then, you know, I work Monday, Tuesday. And now I'm going to be off Wednesday and Thursday because of the rain. Um, and, you know, I'm sitting here at home swindling my thumbs because I literally can't do anything. Um, they're, you know, they know that I'm 60 miles away and I have to drive over there. And they're out, they're loading bees on and and moving them out to yards. And it only takes a couple people to do that. One guy to run the skitter and the other guy to hold the smoker. And they've got a young kid labor working there. And he's really really close. Lived really really close to the honey house. So um, it's just easy for easier for them to use him than me. So I get relegated to uh, getting time off, which sucks because you know time off means I don't make any money. Um, so that, that's that, and I'm also finding out that schedules are unheard of. Um, you know, you find out what you're, whether you're going to work the next day um, by the time you leave that night. Uh, one day I, were, I, I, I worked till 8.30 at night, and I found out I was going to be off the next day. You know, that's when they told me. So it wasn't like I could plan my day and say, hey, I can go fishing today or or whatever. He just was like, you know, we're going to be here and uh, it's supposed to rain tomorrow. So we're going to just, you know, load bees till it rains. And then and then uh, I'm going to work in the shop and, and you can have the day off and do what you need to get done. And I'm like, I can't do anything. I need to get done when it's raining out. But it is what it is. Um, so that's the bummer part about it. And I'm sort of finding that, you know, my... Thoughts of, you know, maybe having a weekend off every other week are just pretty much in the wind. You know, if it rains during the week, you're not going to get the weekend off because the bees need to be taken care of. Um, on the, 
The flip side of it, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm finding out the commercial operation is a lot about the logistics of the keeping of bees. And, you know, you got to get the bees out to the yard. Uh, that's the number one thing that's where the, all the money is made. They got to get the bees out to the yards. And uh, and that's how they can go, go and start making their honey. And it takes a long, long time. You know, you got one skitter and one truck and... You know, you can only load 200 bees at a time and you go out, you load 200 hives and you got to go to three yards and each one's 12, 15 miles apart. And it takes an hour to, to unload the truck, get them strapped up. And then you got to travel another half an hour to another spot, un, you know, unload, unload the skitter, the whole, you know, everything. Uh, so it really, really, really is time consuming. And that's why they work um, loading bees from uh, starting at dawn. On, and they don't quit. Um, even they even load load at night if they can, um, if they can get away with it. Tonight they can't. Obviously, they probably had to quit around around noon because it was raining so much. But but uh, that's the most important things. Um, I'm just finding that uh, you know beekeeping is completely. You know, obviously, commercial beekeeping is completely different uh, than than being a being a hobbyist. Just the way they go about doing things and um you know some things that we we cared greatly about can't be concerned you can't spend too much time doing something otherwise you'll never get anything done so i'm finding that out too uh, and i'll talk more about that in the upcoming videos but today what i did was uh i i, I uh, videotaped uh one of the first days um in my beekeeping experience, like I said, I'm just relegated to running the smoker and kind of sitting back and watching. They're easing me into it, which I appreciate very much. Um, physical aspect of it isn't isn't too extreme now. Still a little concerned when they start we start pulling off honey supers because if you watch these big commercial operations where they got these lifts that lift the stacks of honey off and throw them on the truck, well, that doesn't happen here. You literally... Uh, lift the honey off of the high, the stacks one at a time stack them up and on a pallet and then the you know the skitter will come and pick them pick them up and take them off but you know it's, it's doing this doing this doing this doing this i mean you know just a lot of back breaking work i can see in my future i'm hope hoping that my back holds out so far so good my first day my back creaked a little bit and and because i was hauling just empty super boxes around and i could feel my back twinging a little bit but i could hear grunts and groans coming from quite a few people so i was i didn't feel so bad um getting stung i've gotten stung every single day uh, this hand um not so much didn't get stung once on it this hand i've gotten stung uh, a couple of times every single day and for a while I was off all day today, so it's it's pretty much. But I look like uh, Rocky uh, wearing boxing gloves because my my whole, whole hand is pretty well swollen. I mean, I could still use my fingers, and, and but I got stung on every single finger and and every single webbing of my you know just everywhere on this hand. I've I've gotten stung so far. Um, a lot of things we concern ourselves with, like calm, gentle bees. That's like non-existence for a commercial beekeeper. Bees are bees. I don't even know if they know if they got Italians or not. They're just interested in honey. Pure, simple, that's it. Um, and, uh, and you know, this operation isn't in it for, you know, making bees or making, uh, making um, nukes or making packages or anything like that. They're really, this is, they're in it for the honey. That, that That's it in a nutshell. Um they do care about their bees, obviously. Um, but like I said, they, you know, since they're they're so wintered in Florida, they, it doesn't really matter if they winter well. Uh, that's not a concern. Um, doesn't matter if they're a pissy bee or you know, we we see a pissy hive and we all talk about you know got to requeen it. It doesn't even. I don't even think I I haven't asked that question, but I don't think that even enters their equation. Um, they pinch off old queens. Uh, they just look to see, is it a drone laying colony? Uh, did they lose a queen? Because they, 
they requeen a lot of their hives with cells and uh, and full hive just gets a cell and sometimes the queen doesn't come back. So you get a lot of those hives that that uh, were didn't get made. The, the queens didn't never came back. And um, and so they're they're drone laying colonies and you gotta cull those and stick those boxes on other boxes and that's what they inspect for before they slap a honey super on them. Um, you know some parts of the load you can tell you can tell came from some yards that were better than others you know full full of honey or something like that uh, others are weaker you know and you lose quite a few hives they haven't noticed that but uh, it's an eye-opening experience to say the least it's just a different world completely different world and uh, like i said this video that i did today um all it is is uh um just a day in the life of uh of loading bees uh up and down and like i said very little keeping of bees right now and more of the logistics of getting them set um getting them unloaded loaded set that's it you know that's what we're that's what we're doing and that's what we're going to be doing for the next uh month i'm going to guess we got to go down to florida and take honey off of the uh the hives down there and and extract before they get loaded up and then ship back up to Wisconsin here and then we got to come back and then unload all those bees so you know I don't know how many hives they totally they, they got somewhere in the neighborhood of you know 2,000 uh, it just depends you know like I said there are a lot of them uh, you don't have Queens so they get you know you start off with 2,000 you end up with you know 1,800 or 1500 then you do splits now you're up to 2500 so that's kind of how they run things so i it's interesting to say the least uh i did enjoy the beekeeping part of it the the one day that i got we we, we the part of the day that we got to go out and keep bees i got into a rhythm got really going um i really enjoyed that part of it uh but i i totally understand you know that there's just a lot more of the of the of the just equipment side and setting and, and logistics and all that side of it and that takes up probably three quarters of the of bee of the beekeeping you know managing the bees is a small small uh, amount of, of time spent on that um, you know they do go through and obviously treat for mites um, I don't I haven't we haven't gotten into um, checking for mites yet so I don't know how that system's gonna go but it's just interesting to say the least like my bosses I do I I, I can respect people I don't care how old you are uh, he's 28 but you can tell extremely hard worker probably harder worker than all I was ever in my life and and I, I was not a slacker but um, it's very easy to work for somebody like that and obviously completely knows what he's doing um still some things obviously to learn but i have a lot more to learn from them than 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 they have to learn from me so looking forward to the coming weeks and uh maybe i'll shoot out some videos uh, you know it was funny they they just kind of joke around with me they didn't have any problem with me videotaping any part part of it he saw, I mean, it was really funny. I just kind of like set the little camera out there and he's loading B and he's just doing it. And he's just going through and loading bees. And he goes, he goes, he goes, you didn't catch all that, did you? When we were screwing up, we were tossing a strap across and we kept missing, kept missing. He's like, you didn't record that, did you? I started laughing. So he, he, he knew I was recording every bit. I said, you saw that on? Huh? He goes, yeah, I saw that. So anyways, uh, I hope you enjoy the clip. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you got comments or questions on it, uh, please leave them below what your thoughts are. And uh, we'll see you next time. Happy beekeeping. Hey, everybody. It's Kevin at Bear Creek. Back to work. We're loading bees this morning.
so far I get the easy job smoking bees and watching him run the loader and that's okay learning is good So it's about 7 o'clock at night, uh, the bees from Florida have arrived, more bees from Florida have arrived, and uh, we're relegated tonight because we have to offload them because the uh, trailer does not belong to us, so it's not like the bees can sit on there, so they all have to be offloaded when the truck truck, truck arrives. So you know, we're, uh, we're going to be spending the next couple hours. Uh, taking bees off. This is a loading yard, one of several in the area, I guess. It's about 500 hives, roughly. And uh, I got myself set up here uh, for because uh, somebody's got to get up on top and take off the. Uh, the boards on the top of the the semi and I'm gonna guess that's probably gonna be me so I've got a walk up there and uh, and there's bees crawling around everywhere up there so I have uh, taken matters into my own hands and uh, literally duct taped my pants cuffs so there you go life of a beekeeper it's glamorous unloading bees Bees are really, really calm tonight. It's cool out and it's a nice night and it's not quite dark yet, so they're not real pissy. which is why I duct taped my uh, my shoes here but I had a whole bunch of them climbing up my, my legs but
Actually, it really doesn't take that long. We've only been doing this for about 20 minutes, and he's damn near got half the... What are you doing? 